back to the Metairie Bank Studios at WBOK. It's your morning cup with Warren Bell. And we are back. It is still 72 degrees outside, but the bad news is it's only it's only going to get warmer from there. It's like a broken record, folks. Yes, we're going to have those temps back in the 80s today. Some folks are saying 82 or 83 degrees. We shall see uh, as we let this Wednesday progress. Well, this is the day. You know, we mention every day that uh, we were so grateful when our friends at Metairie Bank decided to partner with us to help put this show on the air every single weekday morning at 6 a.m. And for the last week or so, we've been teasing y'all saying, well, this month we're going to have our Money Matters segment to explain home buying and the whole issue of getting your credit right for mortgage applications, etc. And we've been telling y'all about Miss Elaine, Miss Elaine, Miss Elaine. <laughs> well, Miss Elaine is in the in the house with us right now, Miss Elaine White. You tell them who you are because I, I remember being stunned when I said, so how long you been with the bank? And your response was? 40 plus years. Well, we're not going to say how many because then people no. will start trying to figure out age. No. <laughs> and you were, we should say you were eight years old when that started, right? Yeah, that would be great to say. <laughs> it would be nice, wouldn't it? Yes. 40 plus years started out, I guess, like most people do in the banking industry at the... As a teller, I was a savings teller when I started with Metairie Bank. And I have been there 40-plus years, and I have enjoyed every year. And we should point out, New Orleans girl. New Orleans, born and raised. Born and educated raised. in New Orleans. And still got children and grandchildren in, in, in New, New Orleans, Orleans schools. At, amen to that. Yes. So your job every day at Metairie Bank is to help people who are coming in to get financing for that first house or second house or whatever, right? Yes, and to help them through this process stress-free. It is a process, right? It is. It definitely is a process. Help us understand, if you were giving someone initial advice, they're thinking about buying a house, what are the things they need to get nailed in place so that they have an easier experience when they get to meet you, for I example? would start basically looking at my credit First of all, I'd look at my credit. What are my credit scores? Also, where's my down payment coming from? How much money do I need to have in reserve to afford the home that I would like to purchase? Now, in working with your credit score, first of all, I would like to find a good credit score because the more credit you have and the larger down payment, more house you can purchase. Metairie Bank helps you strive to get fat, but this is your responsibility to get that credit in order. And people need to be realistic also as they talk about the kind of house they they want to own, right? Exactly. Now, you may have to have a starter home to begin with. Everyone may not start out with a million-dollar home. We have to crawl before we can run. Million-dollar home? <laughs> 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 Most of us never get there, right? Well, you always aim high. That's right. Okay. That's right. So that, you know, New Orleans, we always love to party. So we want to have the best of the best. And we do find ways to find dollars for those things that we think oh, of as do important. Oh, ever. Right? So you talked about credit scores. Another term I don't fully understand myself and again I'm I'm done with the home purchasing piece in my life but what is this debt to in, income ratio and why do people have to understand that before they have to provide it to those lenders well you have to provide to the lender your debt to income ratio this takes into consideration any obligation that you are obligated to pay out of your monthly expenses and income we, the bank itself looks at your ratios because we have a set number. No more than 38% of your income can be allocated to pay your debt. So once we meet that, we've tapped out your income as far as purchasing a home. And if you have trouble figuring that yourself, the bank, any bank or any mortgage company is going to be able to help you get to the point where you at least have calculated what's realistic versus unrealistic. Sure. We will help you sh uh, get to that calculation. We will walk you through that calculation 
And this way you can calculate it yourself before you come in to meet with a lender. You have a general idea of how to get to that number. And I certainly know this from having gone through it many, many years ago, a couple of decades ago, I guess I should say. But it's not just figuring out what my note's going to be because your monthly note actually is more than just the note for the house. It is. It includes your escrows, which includes homeowner's insurance. That's right. If you're in a flood insur- in a flood area, you have flood insurance required and you have property taxes. You know the state of Louisiana and the city of Orleans work on the taxes that you pay. So this is definitely a big requirement, and it comes out of each note. And you guys are headquartered in Jefferson Parish. I didn't run that story this morning, but there is a headline this week in the news about the homeowner insurance rates possibly getting a break in Jeff Parish which means that'll be good news for anybody who comes into your institution, for example, trying to purchase a home in Jeff Parish. Their burden insurance-wise may actually go down in 2018. Correct. Their their insurance rates could go down. Also, with the flood insurance rates, those could go down because they have did a new mapping of Jefferson Parish. So the flood insurance rates could possibly go down. And as I recall, that map, was beneficial for some people who were in a were were considered in a higher zone than they may have needed to be in. Right, they were in a, a risk high standpoint. risk uh, area, which and they may have lowered it. Now, some it may have been reverse. So, yeah, hopefully you may be in that area that it lowered you, not increased you. But uh, I guess I didn't realize that it was not a good news situation all the way. <laughs> some people may actually be facing more exactly. because of that. So y- you've helped us in understand what debt-to-income ratio is. Basically, when you guys look at someone's income when they're buying a house, first thing you want to know is how much of that's already claimed, exactly. so to speak, by your other debtors. Right. There's another concept or or term that I'd like some some help with, loan versus home value. In, in other words, and I guess it's like when you buy a car, you need to have 5% down or 10% down, and the more you have down, the better your interest rate, the less you pay per month. But how does that apply when it's a home purchasing proposition? When you home purchase, the amount you put down, well, we can finance – 97% on our first-time home buyers. That is as low as 3% down out of pocket. Really? Yes, that's out of Now, that pocket. seems low. I would have thought 10% minimum. Are these under certain circumstances these are only? Average medium income home buyers. So these are your low to moderate income borrowers. Now, they can get into a home as low as 3%. But stop and think. I was going to say, there's got to be a but there, Miss. You Lane. still have that debt to income. So your income must not exceed 80% of the average medium income. If I'm understanding that correct, so as as a bank or, or finance company calculates that, that ratio, part of the calculation is what you would end up having as your debt-to-income ratio once this house becomes an additional obligation. Correct. Wow. Now, I'm a guy who watches a lot of those guy-type shows when I have nothing better to do, you know, like those channels with all the cowboy shoot-em-ups, et cetera. And, Miss Elaine, there isn't a commercial break that goes by without at least one or two companies trying to sell you or us us old people, not you, Miss Elaine, but us old people on, and you know what I'm getting ready to ask you about. I know. What the heck is a reverse mortgage? Does it make sense for most of our listeners, or how does a listener determine whether that's something he should even be thinking about? You, and now, you and I had this conversation a few weeks ago when I asked you about my scenario, and we agreed, nah, n- not really. But what is a reverse mortgage, and how does it help some folks who may be having a little bit of a challenge in their later years? Well, a reverse mortgage is the opposite of a conventional mortgage. When the seniors take the equity out of their home, you must be 62 or greater, and there are no payments, repayments from the senior at all. It's not expected. The senior will never pay a note on this mortgage. so, So what's in it for the bank or for the finance company? Well, for the institution that's financing this, they're putting 
their funds out to the seniors in advance. So once the senior leave the home, it's no longer their primary residence. The home is either sold or refinanced, and the financial institution is repaid at that time. However, the interest is added back to the loan on a monthly basis, whereas a conventional loan, you're paying the interest up front, the reverse, it adds back to the loan and collect it once the senior leaves the home. In most cases, that's when that person Either passes on. passes on or move into an assisted living ah, center. Right, there's always that scenario yes. also. Now, if one has children. If one has children. If one has descendants, they want to pass things on to the reverse mortgage approach. It may actually be the wrong thing It to may do. not be the correct move for that senior if they want to leave that to their descendants at that time. So these are things you would have to consider if you intend to leave your home to one of your descendants because that descendant either have to pay that loan off or sell that property to alleviate that particular debt. You know, I'm thinking back maybe 20 years ago, there were some folks inviting me to be their spokesperson for reverse mortgages. And I still chuckle today when I see guys like Tom Selleck yeah. doing spots because these folks were saying, oh, no, we're going to put you in a regional you know, TV marketing campaign. And at the time, I was still trying to be that guy in the news biz, mm -hmm. that guy in higher ed. And it, it just didn't seem like something to do at that point. And here we are so many years later, and there's so much public conversation about reverse mortgages, or at least so much advertising, but it really is important for anyone who's been intrigued by those commercials to really understand what it is before you just call an 800 number and say, I want to do this. Oh, definitely. I would definitely do your background work. There are a few institutions locally that handle reverse mortgages, but get the background, find out, get your questions answered before you side on the dotted line. Now, you say a few local institutions. Is one of those going to be Metairie Bank? Metairie Bank does process reverse mortgages. Now, understand, we do not service the reverse mortgage. We will process it. We will get all your, ans your questions answered. But there are no local servicing institutions in the local area. But it, it can be handled here, and more importantly... If someone needs to have it really explained to relate specifically to them, they need to come in and see someone local versus yes, making sir. some phone calls. Yes, definitely. I would agree. You know, come in and see someone face-to-face. -face. And, and y'all know who I'm trying to suggest you come in and see, Elaine right? Elaine White at Metairie Bank. Miss Elaine White <laughs> at Metairie Bank. Tell them where the main office is because you're located at the main building, which I always tell you, folks, if you have any yes. trouble, just imagine you're heading to Sam's Club <laughs> to get your weekly gas fill up or your 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 eighteen thousand pounds of bread or milk or eggs, and you can't help you you can't help but see Metairie Bank because it's just past that Causeway interchange. Right. right, we're located at the corner of Severn and Metairie Road. Our local address is thirty three forty four Metairie Road at the corner of Severn and Metairie Road. And if one wants to talk specifically about mortgages, be it reverse mortgages or what I guess we call, if it's a reverse mortgage, a, a, a normal mortgage would be a forward mortgage, right? Correct. Just like with an auto transmission, correct? It's correct. It's the opposite, <laughs> it. yes. Miss Elaine White from Metairie Bank, thanks to you. Thanks to all the good folks over at Metairie Bank, uh, where I am a customer as well. If y'all haven't looked into that free checking account piece, you might want to do that because we've all had free checking accounts that really weren't free when we got the monthly statement, were they? Well, I can vouch for this one, and I can also vouch for the nice USB uh, empowered headphones you get when you sign up. Thank you. Thanks to Ron Sanford, the CEO for Metairie Bank and all the folks involved there. The CEO.